Welcome to Designing for Infrastake and Nanostake. The presenter today is Casey House. Uh, he is well versed in Infrastake and Nanostake. He has been with Extol for nine years and he's our integration technical support manager. And he, um, he just knows what he's talking about. So I think you're gonna learn a lot from him. Without any further ado, Casey, take it away. All right, well, uh, thanks, Jason. I appreciate that. Uh, everybody, welcome to Designing for Infrastake and Nanostake. Uh, I think before we get into the subject matter of, the, of our discussion today, uh, it makes sense to do a real quick uh, review of who Extol is. Uh, we are an engineering and innovation company that improves the way plastic products are made. Uh, we do that through the technologies, the custom automation and engineering services that we offer both domestically and internationally. So uh, here's what our agenda looks like uh, this afternoon. We are going to briefly talk about infrastake and nanostake processes. Uh, in that, I mean how those actual processes are designed to operate, uh, how to design parts for both of those processes, uh, and then choosing infrastake versus nanostake, what process would work best in your application. And then as Jason mentioned, we are gonna have some time afterwards for question and answers. Uh, so please, if you can think of something as we go through this, jot it down, we'd love to talk about it. So let's talk about uh, the processes in general. Uh, we'll talk uh, a little bit about InfraStake uh, and NanoStake. InfraStake is uh, infrared plastic staking. Uh, by that, it is a non-contact process. This is used in both large and small boss applications. The modules themselves, we have a couple different sizes, but they're physically larger than NanoStake. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Uh, and then something that is very important with an infrastate process is it does include integral clamping uh, built into the process at every staking location. So nanostake, on the other hand, uh, is not infrared. Uh, it is a low current, high performance, closed loop staking process. It uses conduction uh, rather than infrared. Uh, again, we'll talk about that a little bit uh, further down. Um, it was specifically designed with small bosses in mind uh, that are in really tight places. Um, you'll see as we go into this a little bit further, the physical size of this module is just much smaller uh, than InfraStake. Works really well in small parts. Uh, however, it does not offer the integral clamping that InfraStake does. So this is InfraStake. Uh, you can see here this image, there's two different InfraStake modules. These are the two most common modules that we offer today. Uh, ISM20, the smaller one on the left, uh, and then the IS32, which is a little larger on the right. We'll talk about dimensions in just a minute. But for now, let's talk about the InfraStake process itself. Uh, it's pretty simplistic in nature. However, there are some nuances here that make it very controllable. Uh, and uh, of our superior staking technology than others in the marketplace. So we can break the process down into four specific actions. Um, as I've mentioned, it is designed to clamp the part together. So the first step is where the infrastate module would come and hold the two parts together. Uh, the second step then is we move off to the right, uh, we, is when the actual heating begins. Now you'll see in this image, there are some red lines uh, that represents the infrared energy that's being emitted from the lamp. Uh, it's important to note that it's emitted radially, and then there's a reflector that reflects the energy down towards your part, and then a concentrator, which is that gold cone at the end, that concentrates the energy onto your boss radially. It's important to note that we are not heating from the top down, we're heating from the sides in. That's important because it protects your uh, mating part throughout the process. You'll also see some blue arrows there that represents cooling air. Uh, we do use a low flow of cooling air during the heating process to help open up the process window. So we leave the energy turned on in this heating stage uh, until the amount of energy is absorbed into your part so that it becomes semi-molten. So we don't want it to be liquid. We don't want it to be rigid yet. It just needs to be pliable. When it gets to that state, we switch to the next process, uh, next step in the process, which is forming. 
We then turn the lamp off, extend that internal non-heated punch uh, into the finished position, and then you'll see we've actually doubled the blue arrows. We increase the cooling air to a high flow cooling air. So at this point, we've completed the staking process. We are just uh, wanting to cool everything down. Um, and then we hold that there until the plastic resolidifies. So then we move into the last step where we retract the internal uh, punch. Now that concentrator is acting like a stirping plate. Uh, and then we retract the module when it's complete. So that's the four basic steps of infrastake. So when we move into nanostake, Similarly, we've broken it down into four process, four steps, uh, but they're a little bit different. Uh, as I mentioned a minute ago, nanostake is conductive rather than infrared. So the first step is we bring the module down onto your boss. We turn on the heater. Once that starts to generate heat, we're pushing with pneumatic pressure against your boss. As the temperature goes up, the resistance will go down, and then the module will, will be advanced from a retracted position to a final height. We're actually looking for a very specific temperature as well as a dimension. When we get to that final height, we then change the temperature of the module from a melting temperature to a release temperature. Uh, that's a temperature at which your plastic will naturally retract away from the stainless steel tool. Uh, we do that, we use cooling air as an assist for that. Uh, when we get down to the cool uh, release temperature, uh, we then retract the module and that process is done. So it's a little simpler, um, but the same basic four steps. So let's talk a little bit about strength. Um, how to determine your boss size. So how long, how strong does your joint need to be? So the way we do that is we take the strength requirement of the given joint, of the given staking location. Say you had a 100 pound. Uh, then we multiply that times a safety factor. For infrastake, we recommend 1.2, nanostake 2.5. Then we take that, um, that number and we divide it by the tensile strength of the material that you're working with. For example, if you were working with polypropylene, uh, the tensile strength is about 4,800 PSI. So we would take 100, multiply that times a safety factor of 1.2 for infrastake divide it by the 4,800, and then that gives us a cross-sectional area of 0 0.025 cubic square inches. We then take that cross-sectional area and do the math backwards to get into our boss dimensions. So I wanna talk a little bit about infrastake and why it is a little bit stronger than nanostake. Infrastake is non-contact. It heats the entire boss before it actually touches it with the non-heated punch. So if you can imagine, uh, we leave that module in a position where we've not touched the, mod the, the boss until all of the plastic throughout the boss is semi-molded. Only at that point do we touch it with some tooling and then fit, make it into its finished form. Therefore, we're using all of the material given in the boss. With nanostake, it's conductive, so we can only put energy, heat, into the boss where we touch it. So we're only affecting the outer edges of the boss. As the module advances, there is a chance that some of the material inside of the boss would stand proud, would not be semi-molten, and would not be used in the stake. So we're not necessarily getting 100% of engagement of the plastic. Let's talk a little bit about boss dimensions. We'll go back there. Uh, I wanna talk about ratios when you design your boss height to diameter. For, solid, or for hollow bosses, we recommend 0.8 up to 1.1 times the diameter for the height. So for good starting points, we see a tremendous amount of customers and really good success starting with eighth inch solid, diameter bosses or quarter inch hollow. So when you start with that diameter and that square, um, that area, that cubic area, um, you can multiply and get your height accordingly. Solid bosses are the same thing. Uh, we just do a 
uh, one to one ratio, height to uh, diameter, rather than a 0.8 to 1.1. For solid bosses, it's one to one. And boss size maximums. So very early on, I mentioned that Infrastake is designed for both large and small bosses. Uh, we can do boss diameters up to nine millimeters with Infrastake, whereas NanoStake tops out at four. Uh, we don't recommend NanoStake for hollow. So it's the inner diameter for Infrastake is 5.6, but there's not one for nano. And then the maximum height for Infrastake is 12.7, whereas nano is four millimeters. So probably more material, the mac, probably more important, the maximum material volume is 492 uh, cubic millimeters versus 50 cubic millimeters for nano state. We also need to be worried about module spacing as we're designing. Uh, Infrastake is larger. However, we do have some, some ability to control and reduce the size between modules by being able to both angle the modules and modify the concentrator, again, the gold cone on the end of a module uh, for any avoidance issues. Uh, but because the modules are either 32 millimeter in diameter or 20 millimeter, in order to keep them in the same plane, we have to have that dimension as on center spacing. It's important to point out here that NanoSake, because it is conductive, uh, it does not allow for the modules to be angled. Uh, however, the body diameter of the nano stick module itself is only eight millimeters. So giving, leaving enough room for uh, adjustability in the X and the Y, uh, you can use a 10 millimeter on center boss spacing for nano stake. But again, nano stake cannot be tipped, cannot be angled. In regards to materials, both InfraStake and nano stake work with any thermoplastic. Uh, however, InfraStake, uh, because it is uh, infrared in nature. Uh, darker colors, uh, they absorb infrared energy more efficiently, uh, which makes the cycle time faster. Uh, so dark equals fast, light equals slow. Nanostake is conductive. It does not have uh, any effect. Color does not have any effect on the process. Uh, both of these are, being, are able to be used with fillers, glass, or talc. Um, it may provide a little bit more wear on the tooling over the life of a product but both will work just fine. Both products are, are very minimal in sticking. Uh, Infrastake due to the non-heated uh, punch and nanostake to the release temperature. Uh, as far as coatings, this is another one where Infrastake varies from nanostake. With infrared, we have to make sure that the bosses are masked from any chroming, metallization, overspray, anything like that. It would simply be burned off or affect the process. Nanostake, uh, it doesn't matter. Nanostake will just quote unquote power right through uh, any of those finishes. So let's hold the two of them up uh, against each other, Infrastake versus Nanostake. Uh, regarding st strength, Infrastake is the best. Nanostake is still very good, but Infrastake will be stronger. Uh, cycle time, Infrastake uh, will go anywhere from less than a second up to about 20 seconds. Uh, for the process, nanostake is up to around 12 seconds. To, again, both of those numbers are based on your material type and dimensions. Part clamping is built into infrastake where it is not a nanostake. Infrastake does need some regular cleaning, periodical maintenance. The reflective geometries need to be kept clean, whereas nanostake does not have that at all. They are both very safe for sensitive parts. Neither one of these technologies introduce any vibration. Um, material color, uh, we spoke about it a minute ago, the darker the color, the more efficient it absorbs IR. So infrastake um, is highly affected by color. Nanostake is not. And then the module sizes and recap, uh, infrastake we have two that are very common, 32 millimeters in diameter uh, and uh, 20 millimeters. Nanostake is only at eight so we have a question and answer period coming up here, but before I dive into that, I also want to make a real quick mention that everything we talked about uh, in the past few minutes is considered a standard design. 
If you do have an application that uh, goes outside of that, if you see something you're interested in, but doesn't necessarily fit with any of the information we've talked about, uh, let us know. Uh, both of these technologies, we do have the ability to do custom tooling, custom modules for you based specifically on your application. So please don't dismiss one of these just because something may be just a little bit outside of what you were expecting. Thanks, Casey. Um, Does anybody have any questions? And if you do, please go ahead and type it into the chat panel on the bottom right. While people are doing that, I know that there was several people that joined shortly after the presentation had started. Um, and so I wanted to kind of re-give the, the bit of background information we gave at the very, very beginning. Um, our, our presenter today, Casey House, um, has been with Extol for nine years, and he has got the title of Integration Technical Support Manager. So you have his contact information here on the screen. I think we'll leave it on this slide for right now so that if people want to write that stuff down, they can do that and be able to get in contact with um, Casey. Um, so Hugh asked the question, can this presentation be shared publicly? And yes, we will make this presentation available after, um, after the webinar is over, and we'll be able to share that with all of you so that you can um, use it and share it with your colleagues. Um, well, we also recorded the presentation today, so there, um, we'll probably have this available uh, soon. Another question that we got is from Walter. <clears throat> Maximum size for a nano stake is four millimeters. What would be the minimum size for a nano stake? Casey, could you answer that? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Uh, thanks, Walter. Um, although we don't publish a minimum size, we only publish, publish excuse me, a max size uh, due to performance. Um, minimum size can be down to less than a millimeter. Um, we've seen applications uh, in the medical industry uh, that are literally the, the bosses are the size of like monument, monofilament fishing line, like 10 thousandths of an inch. Um, so it can go very, very small. Uh, we just change the geometry inside of the, of the nanostick module itself to accommodate the, the boss size. I did get another question. So this is from Walter. What are the required clearances around the staking tool? For example, the distance from a tool to a side wall of surrounding geometry. Another great question. Um, Typically, from a design perspective, we would like to see 30 thousandths from the side of the, the edge of the module to your part. Now, this is for nano stake uh, because that module is going to create some heat. We just want to make sure that, there, that that heat is not um, imparted into surrounding parts. Now, with InfraStake, we modify the concentrator uh, and then we laser weld in a little closeout. If you look at that image there that says minimize interference, what's really hard to see there is we laser weld in a little a little close out, if you will, to keep the IR energy inside of that module. So those uh, can go right up close enough just so, I mean, I've seen them where they actually touch the part, uh, the interference, if you will, um, keeping in mind that you do have to have adjustability, uh, on center adjustability for both of these technologies. It's important that the, the tooling comes down and is centered over top of your part. All right, well, thank you everybody for calling in and for signing in and for, um, for your attention. And um, we will share this presentation right after this is over. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Have a good afternoon.